yesterday. And so my question is, how do you avoid bilking? And the answer comes from information entropy. Entropy has two forms. Uh, the classical form is thermodynamics. And at a previous SSE meeting, I talked about this uh, thermodynamic entropy and, and discussed how it uh, can be used with regard to psi information. There's another form of entropy, and that is information entropy. And that is the entropy that I'm going to be using today. And it has been shown pretty much conclusively that information entropy is, in fact, identical to thermodynamic entropy. Uh, so again, this is a measure of disorder. Uh, this information entropy can be expressed quantitatively. And you can express it in terms of how surprised you are to learn that an intended outcome has occurred. And that's called surprisal. It's a technical term. Uh, so if you know little, it, it really is. I didn't make it up. If you know little about uh, the outcome and uh, it occurs, then you will be very surprised. If you know a lot, you'll be less surprised. And so this surprisal is a measure of uncertainty, and it's quantified in terms of entropy. And so if you know little beforehand, the information entropy is large. And it turns out that in this case, the possibility of retropsychokinesis is large. This has been described and can be described quantitatively using entropy and surprisal uh, in information entropy, uh, uh, in information theory uh, involving Shannon's famous formula. I'm not going to go into that right now. So what are the implications of this approach in which we say that, in fact, you can have uh, retrocausation? It does not contradict physics under certain conditions. Well, we can say that retrocausation is compatible, and I haven't gone into that here, with Newton's laws and conservation of energy. And I can say that the real question is one of the second law of thermodynamics and entropy. Is uh, uh, retrocausation compatible with that? And I think that really is the question, and that's how it ought to be posed. Why the second law of thermodynamics? Because the second law of thermodynamics is really just a description of logic. It describes logically how a multi-part system uh, by uh, uh, probability must evolve over time. So what I've done is I've linked uh, logic from the second law of thermodynamics and the Bilking paradox uh, to produce what are the conditions for retrocausation. And we find that it's not, a not an all-or-nothing process, but in fact, it's a, it's, a, it's a somewhat process. And the greater our knowledge of a previous outcome, the smaller the information entropy is. And the smaller the inter information entropy is, the less of an effect we can have on the past, the lower our psychokinesis efficiency, if we can define such a quantity. So the bilking paradox disappears if psychokinesis is limited by uncertainty. And that uncertainty is uh, measured by information entropy. And looking at it a little bit more in terms of quantities that we deal with every day in, in life, it's limited by noise. Because the more noise that a system has, the greater the, entropy, the information entropy is, and the greater uh, the uh, uh, psychokinesis can be. And it, this is consistent with other uh, musings and studies which have linked psi phenomena to noise in a system. If you have a perfectly defined system with no randomness asso uh, associated with noise, uh, then uh, we cannot have a psi phenomena. Thank you. Questions, comments? I was afraid of a question from York, and here it comes. <laughs> Some speculations by the late philosopher Robert Nozick about the, uh, uh, the way truth values are related to time. 
uh, suggest an alternative scenario in which it is possible to uh, win yesterday's lottery even after you already know the wrong ticket, that if uh, uh, retro PK uh, can actually operate, it would be in principle possible using Nozick's model that you make your PK effort, uh, you change this event in the past, and then all causal correlates change, uh, in which case you would find yourself completely forgetting everything that had happened before, and you would simply have been holding the winning lottery ticket the whole time, and there would be no point in this case of using the retro PK. This is not a uh, th this is not an internal contradiction because the of uh, the uh, way Nozick's uh, truth values are handled, and I'm wondering if you'd like to uh, <coughs> comment on this approach. Uh, okay, so that is one of a class of several uh, philosophical uh, descriptions of ways that you can uncause something in the past to happen uh, retroactively. And I find them to be highly artificial, and I see no experimental evidence for them. It doesn't seem to relate in any way to what I understand as how psi phenomena occur. And although I think they're nice mind candy, I, I don't think that they help us in understanding what's happening here. So Garrett, as a, uh, as a practical matter in doing this, um, when you start thinking about picking the six numbers of the lottery out of the pool of 40 or so numbers, doesn't, uh, aren't those completely independent events in the knowledge of one really shouldn't have any effect on the, on the others. It just basically reduces the probability of picking a 1 in 40 versus the next number is a 1 in 39. So I'm not sure. It's, if you think about it as each, each prediction or each information exchange is an is a independent event, unless you're saying that you're that, well, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Uh, Daryl, I think your point is well taken. And particularly after my response to uh, York in saying that York's examples were unrealistic. You're pointing out that my example, too, is unrealistic. And uh, I, I agree with you. Actually, the lottery example, I put it up there because the numbers give us a good mechanism to kind of think how much of something do we know. But I agree with you that there are problems with the lottery example. And if we want to talk about a real example, it would have to be some sort of a fuzziness of understanding an image or something like that, where we've got certain parts of it. So your point is well taken. Hey, Garrett. Um, I'm kind of going to ask a similar question to everybody else, but that, as everyone else. But isn't there a, can you always kind of have a broader system around the system that you're in, where, for example, it turns out that your lottery information was a mistake, or you misheard it, or just kind of on and on? And aren't those sort of things, um, wouldn't they be governed by the same sorts of rules in a way? So this mistake. I, I actually need a response from John. Um, this mistake, is it part of the noise of a larger system, or is it separate from the noise of a larger system? It's part of the noise of a larger system, uh, but the idea is that you can always have a larger system effectively. I mean, at the end of the day, you could keep working through these systems, and then you could come upon an observation and say, oh my god, and then just wake up effectively. So, you know, that's a silly right. philosophical way of looking at it, but. I don't know that we can talk about a system that's totally isolated and closed I, off. I agree with you, and this is really a flaw of the law, the second law of thermodynamics, which says that you're dealing with a closed system, and the entropy within that closed system acts in a certain way. And you're saying that really no system is closed, and I agree. Thank you, Garrett. It's time for our break. Thank you.